In this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite toning techniques for getting sepia. And then I'm going to show you how to apply it to multiple images super quick. And then I'm going to show you how to very easily apply the same hue saturation adjustment layer that you've created your sepia on to any kind of video. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how you can create a sepia tint inside of Adobe Camera Raw with the new presets and also with the custom color grading options that we have. This is gonna be an amazing video. Enjoy. Yes! That's awesome! What? So once you have your image open in Photoshop, there are three ways to get to a hue saturation adjustment. The first one is if you go up to the top menu bar, you toggle open image, you go to adjustments, and you come down to hue saturation. The thing about this particular adjustment is it's destructive. Once it's applied and the file is saved and closed, we can never ever re-edit this. So I'm gonna cancel that. And generally, I stay away from these adjustments because they're all destructive. That being said, you can get access to every one of these adjustments as a non-destructive adjustment layer by either coming down to the fourth icon over, clicking on it, and essentially you have every one of those adjustments right here that are applied as an adjustment layer, and you see hue saturation is right here. I like to use the icons at the top. I hover over them and it reminds me what they are. And then once you learn your favorites, it's pretty easy just to always go to them. So here is the create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'll click it and you can see it's applied. Pull this down just a touch. The great thing about this, I do not have to convert this to black and white first. All I do is I click colorize and it will automatically convert it to black and white applying 25% of saturation and it defaults to the far left of the color spectrum here on hue. I usually like to drag mine over to the traditional sepia, which is more of a warmish, orangish brown. And then you can drag the intensity of the color to wherever you like. And I like mine about right here. And then also to emulate some of the traditional black and white toning, I like to pull the lightness up just the barest touch. And to me, that's one of my favorites. What happens if you really love this, whatever yours is? I mean, maybe you wanna come all the way over to blue and that's your favorite with a lot of saturation. So you get to choose what it is you like. But let's say we're trying to create a, a standardized sepia tone and we wanna present five images together in a gallery or to a client or on our online portfolio. So once you've found your favorite blend of whatever hue and saturation adjustment that you like, whether it's sepia or a cool tone, all you have to do is come up to these dialog lines, click them, and choose Save Hue Saturation Preset. It'll open up this dialog box, saving it inside the Photoshop application folder. You don't need to know where it is, which is why it's hidden from you. And I'm just gonna type My Sepia. Make sure you name it something that you understand and just click save. Now watch this. Now I have my sepia as one of my options. So if I go to the next image that I also want to have this same adjustment, I go up to the hue saturation adjustment layer, click it. It's gonna go to the preset default and I'm just gonna come down my sepia and I've automatically applied what I know that I love. Another way to do it, like here's another image right beside it. So essentially all you have to do is grab the hue saturation adjustment layer and just drag the layer over the tab of the new document you want it applied to, come down anywhere inside and drop and it's automatically applied that way. In Adobe Camera Bridge, I've selected this file. I'm gonna click and just drag it over to the Photoshop window that's right underneath, dropping it to auto load. And I'm gonna play through by hitting the space bar. This is just a quick 11 second video. But as you're looking at it, do you see how it's flat? It's missing for sure rich blacks, probably rich whites. We'll activate the histogram so that we can see exactly what's going on. I'll hit the space bar to pause it. I'll add in levels adjustment layer right on top. And I was right. This is a classic low contrast image missing the dark tones and a lot of the light tones. The quickest way to do this is to pull the black slider to the base of the mountain, the white slider to the base of the mountain while leaving it an RGB and you're done. It's quick and works pretty much all the time. And since this is a black and white image file to begin with, there's no reason to go into the individual color channels. I'll hit Command Z to undo that. The other way to reset this quickly, even quicker than dragging the sliders to the base of the mountain, is just using the black and white point eyedropper. So I'll click the black point and I'll click on something that should be black, maybe that real deep shadow hole here. And then I'll click the white point eyedropper and find something I would want to be super white, maybe this point here. 
and then I hit play. And notice how we've adjusted the contrast for the entire image, giving it a bit more snap, which looks really nice. Now I want to add a sepia tint or you know a color grade. I'll pause the video and I'll just go up and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. There's a lot of ways to do this. I'm just going to show this one specific technique. Hue and saturation, if you click on colorize, it's going to automatically apply these settings. Generally, I like to have a warmer, almost brown tone to make it look more old timey, something like that. And then I'll drag the saturation so it's real subtle. Like it's just a little bit of a hint of that old timey photograph look. And now I'll hit play. So now I have this nice sepia over the image. Yes! Since I've already opened up this JPEG in Photoshop, I can still get to Adobe Camera Raw by going up to Filter and down to Camera Raw Filter. This is the exact same Adobe Camera Raw processing engine that you usually use to convert or to process your raw files. But you still have all the adjustment features and controls, which is really nice. There's a couple of great ways to do this. The first one is I'm just going to toggle on a black and white conversion at the top, and I'm going to go over to the new presets area. The Adobe Camera Raw has always had presets, but they just released about 70 really awesome ones. And since I want to do a sepia, if I come down to the vintage style and you just toggle it open with this disclosure triangle and you just hover over each one and it shows you a variety of selenium, uh, pallad palladium, so many different old timey techniques. Let's see here. Yeah, there's a nice sepia one. Sepia typically has a brownish tinge. So I'll click that and then see at the bottom where it says grain off. See that grain there in the darks? If I don't like that grain or I think it's too heavy handed, I can just click that one as well and see how it kept the sepia and it removed the grain. So these presets, as you just saw, are stackable so that I can always use them on top of each other. So now I could just click OK and notice what it did. It applied that feature to my image. Now, unfortunately, since I applied that to my background, I've now contaminated my background, so I can't, can't blend back and forth or whatever. So if I hit Command or Control Z to undo that, it undoes the last thing I did, which it sees everything I did in Adobe Camera Raw Filter as one single thing. So now I can hit Command or Control J, so I have a duplicated layer. But if I go back up to Filter, remember Filter remembers the very last thing you did in any of its filters, and it always puts it at the very top. I only made a, or three clicks. I clicked on the black and white, I added the vintage sepia filter, then I, I toggled on the grain off. So I did three things, but it was going to remember every single thing I did. So I can just click the very top line, and it's going to reapply without me having to go all the way back and redo it. And that's really nice. But I'll toggle that eyeball off. Come back to the background, hit Command or Control J. So again, I'm not working on the original layer. Now let's go back over to the Camera Raw Filter dialog box. I want to show you another really cool way. You can actually do custom color grading. So again, I'm just going to toggle on it. The image is a black and white. I'll toggle on color grading, which is going to allow you to stylize your photo by adding colors and tints specifically to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And let's see how that works. All you do is you grab this little center point and you just pull it around the radius. And we know that sepia is somewhere between red and yellow, kind of an orangey brown. So all I'm doing now is tinting the midtone. So I just find a tint that I want. The further to the outside I get means it's 100% saturated. The closer to the center I get means it's 0%. So this is where you have a drag and drop kind of control of your saturation of tinting just the midtones. I also have a slider of how much I want it to affect the, the darker or the lighter parts of the midtones. Then I can come in the shadows. You'll see this pretty dramatically. So I'm going to pull that over. See how I, I quickly tinted the shadows? Now they're not rich black. They're like a rich brown. That's a really powerful technique. And then I can just barely tint the highlights a little bit to make the image overall very homogenous in its tinting. And then I also have blending slider that lets me decide how much I want to blend between those three areas. And then I have a balance slider. So you just drag to taste. And when you're ready, you still have the ability to toggle back open your basic panel and adjust your clarity, your dehaze, you know, pull down the highlights a little bit. You still have the ability to do all of the spot stuff that you, you might want to do. Like if you wanted to go into this new masking feature and toggle on a radial gradient and say, let's make the center just a little brighter and pull that down. Like you have that ability and like maybe that was a little too crazy. Maybe I want it to come out a little more as an oval, something like that. Maybe pull the highlights down just a touch and click OK. This is the color grading from inside of Adobe Camera Raw where you're doing it manually, which gives you a ton of control. And then here's the one where we did it, a nice subtle version 
with the vintage filter and turning the grain off. Now you can always blend between them. And I think that's the most power. Like I'd probably go between this one and lower the opacity to bring in some of that warmth from the other one and kind of get the best of both worlds between the methods. Hey, if you like this video and it helps, you can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.